Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to Conversations with My Higher Self. How are you? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about the root chakra. Um, at one point, I did a whole slew of episodes about the different chakras. I don't think I ever got to the root chakra. So today, we're going to remedy that. It is, since this is a very important chakra, it impacts your life in so many ways, and better late than never. Um, before we get started, just a couple of things I wanted to remind you of. I have another podcast called Our Sacred Universe. That is a space for guided meditations and journeys. It is a heart-led space. I upload new meditations there every week. And so if you haven't checked it out, if you're not yet meditating with me, I wholeheartedly invite you into that space. It's called Our Sacred Universe, available on Spotify. There's also a YouTube channel if that is your preferred way of meditating. Secondarily, um, I have a book that has been out for about a year or so, and it is called 72 Keys to Manifestation or An Ancient Path of a Modern Day Alchemist. Um, that book contains 72 ancient keys to help you manifest your best life. It is a very alchemical book, uh, hence the word in the name. And alchemy really is an art and a science of taking one form of energy and turning it into another form of energy, which is the definition of manifestation. I feel like as a society, we moved from alchemy and straight into manifestation. It's technically one and the same process, albeit the traditional alchemy or one of the uh, offshoots of the traditional alchemy and alchemical knowledge was more physical, meaning led into uh, gold. And the art of manifestation is mostly taking energy and turning that into physical objects, but it's kind of one of the same thing. So if you wanted to learn more about, you know, the alchemical connection to manifestation in, in general, more about the energy practices that could help you manifest your best life, the book is for you. Alrighty, my darlings. Let's get into it. Let's get into the root chakra. The root chakra, for those of you that don't know, is located at the very base of your spine. And it is, it corresponds to the color red. Uh, very often it is dubbed the survival center. It is believed that this center is mostly responsible for the primal needs. Things such as survival, things such as food and shelter, things such as, you know, the fight or flight instinct. So, you know, that is kind of like the gist of, um, of the chakra. It has a lot to do with physical safety of your human vessel, your human body. It has a lot to do with your perception of the safety of your surroundings as well, right? Because safety is an opinion, actually, uh, whether or a matter of perception, shall I say, until somebody gets hurt. But I guess where I'm going with this is very often when we do feel unsafe, we don't end up getting hurt. It's more of a feeling or um, a f yeah, like a fear that we have inside. So that all dwells in the root chakra. Um, above and beyond that, the root chakra connects us to the physicality of this experience. So it connects us to the planet Earth, although this is not the only chakra that connects us to the planet Earth. It is one of the few or a few. I would say the most important ones though are the root chakra, the heart chakra, as well as the earth star chakra. Those would be my top three chakras um, that I would say connect us to our third dimensional planetary existence. The lesser known aspects of the root chakra are things like ancestry. A lot fewer people talk that our root center, our foundational center, is where a lot of our ancestral karma, a lot of our ancestral baggage, as well as a lot of our ancestral gifts go. Is this the only place in our body where we feel that inherent connection with the ancestors? It is not. Generally speaking, root chakra and below, right? So um, the base of your spine and below corresponds to um, your ancestry line. You know, things like knees may be connected to your ancestors, things like, you know, different parts of your body's body, like thighs or toes, um, you know, may be connected to your ancestors. Uh, very often they are. But, but I would say energetically, root chakra of all the seven chakras is probably the one that keeps you connected to both of your lineages the most. 
Because of that, it is a blessing and a curse. Your root chakra is a space that enables you to feel into your lineage the most, to understand your lineage the most, to connect with your lineage the most. In fact, if you were ever trying to connect to the family tree, I would start growing that tree and imagining that tree starting from the root center. That is, again, that is almost like, like an umbilical cord that connects you to your ancestors. Of course, all of our ancestry lines carry within themselves uh, a large blueprint of positive and negative experiences, happenings, memories. As such, um, it's actually very common on planet Earth uh, for human beings to hold on to pretty intense levels of trauma, specifically in the red center. A lot of these deep set fears, inexplicable, almost automated type of responses, our survival, deep set survival instinct, a lot of our competitive spirit, a lot of our deep rooted worries exist in the root chakra. And they are a projection of our ancestry line, more so even than our own experience. I thought it would be helpful if I went through maybe some of the most traumatic things that people store in their root chakras, just to give you a general overview. I would go first with uh, females because men and women actually um, tend to hold different kinds of trauma um, and different levels of trauma. Uh, granted, right, we all, you know, you all have both men and women in your lineages. But as you dive into each of your chakras, um, you would notice that some things are very much on the surface and other things um, need to be brought into the limelight a lot more. So uh, in this particular case, whether you come in a female body or you come in a male body, it would really impact the type of trauma, shall we say, or the type of distortions that are front and center in your root chakra. And then other things are going to be hidden. So for um, women, mo mo the majority of women currently alive on planet Earth, the traumas of the root center are first, uh, the worry or the fear of being left alone to fend for, you know, herself as a woman, for yourself as a woman or for the, for the, for the children, right? So the, the fear of being left alone, there is a fear, although that is less pronounced, but a lot of victimhood actually lives in the root center. That victimhood, by the way, lives in the root center for both genders. It doesn't really matter. Uh, or I should say for, you know, whatever gender you identify with, your victim very often is going to live in the root. Because very often when we feel victimized, the parts of our life that suffer the most are related to our survival. Or rather, we are worried about our survival when we feel like a victim, one way or another. Women also carry a lot of energy of feeling trapped in their root center. Trapped in a way or in a sense that they're not able to make the choices that they wish they wanted, uh, they, they, they really truly want to make for their lives meaning they're not empowered enough. Could be that they're stuck in a toxic relationship and cannot leave because they need to take care of the children. Could be that, you know, they have a passion project or a hobby, but it doesn't pay the bills and they have to be responsible. Like whatever that is, that feeling of like a, a little bit like putting yourself last and feeling trapped and not necessarily knowing what the way out is, is very much a feminine flavor of the root chakra trauma. There is a lot around money actually in the root chakra, although traditionally money per se, uh, well, I guess every chakra actually has a connection to money. So let's dispel that myth right there because there is no such thing as a money chakra. The money as it pertains to the red, the red center is survival money. It's rent money. It's the, the have to pay the bills money. It's the uh, keep food on the table money. Right. And then we go up the ladder. And for instance, in the orange, the money in the next step in the sacral, um, the money is going to be all around like the little indulgences. That is a little treat since it's a disposable income, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for the yellow, it could be the money for education, right? Or like little investment projects, et cetera. But not to go in a tangent, going back to the red, red center. A lot of fear um, around money also dwells here. So if you know that about your lineage, that your lineage maybe was not well off or someone in your lineage or like in general, like your lineage struggled with money, all of that trauma, all of that worry, um, all of that lack mentality is going to be in your root center. And maybe I should take a step back and say maybe not all, but like good 90%. 
is where it is. It's where it's stored almost as like a bookmark in a book so that one day somebody could come into the lineage to transcend that mentality of lack and bring about a whole new mentality of abundance. So that is mostly what is true around the trauma side for the um, root chakra for women. For looking at men, we have the polar opposite uh, fear um, and, you know, compared to the female fear, which is not being able to provide, uh, not being able to put, um, you know, the foot on the table for the the wife, essentially, and the kids or the elderly parents or whatever other, you know, so essentially it's like the caretaker drama, so to say, right? And it's that holding on to that responsibility and not being able to quite hit the mark of, of, of like what the man thinks he's supposed to do financially, right? So all of those fears. And because of that, actually in this particular center, a lot of men that are experiencing low self-esteem, their low self-esteem is going to start in the root center, in the red, and then carry over to the yellow, to the solar plexus. Um, and so, um, and, and it is only because the red is such a survival, such a safety chakra. But if your low self-esteem has to do with, I don't know if I'm good enough to earn enough money to, you know, get the right type of house, you know, make, um, um, I don't know, earn, earn um, the money for the food, et cetera, et cetera. Then where it's going to hit you the most is your self-concept and self-confidence, right? That is why for a lot of men, that is where their self-critic also lives. And that, that little voice talking in your ear around how imperfect you are. So that is very much the negative side of, and the shadow side of the red chakra for men. Another negative side for the red chakra for men is Fairly similar to women, the feeling of being trapped in um, either whether that is just, it's like a feeling of not being in control. Um, and very often it has to do with picking your direction in life. Uh, because again, the family, the responsibility is going to drag you back. And instead of pursuing the artist career, you know, and, and being like a starving artist, you have to be responsible. You have to uh, with the bread on the table for the kids, right? And that also creates a big chunk of feeling trapped uh, for men. But of course, there are a lot of other things that dwell here. The fear of going hungry, the, the, the fear of homelessness. That, by the way, is, is in this chakra across genders. So a lot of these things dwell um, in the root chakra. And of course, because this, um, this is the chakra that has the wealthiest amount of information about our ancestors. And let me maybe again, uh, just, just to reframe uh, what I just said. Every chakra is going to be connected to your ancestry line to some degree. Most chakras are going to be connected specifically to your two parents, mother and father, in this physical incarnation. The root chakra is connected to the entirety of your lineage from the very first uh, people, right? The founding couple of the lineage up until your parents, right? That is the wealth and the breadth of information that it holds. It's a pretty large, vast field of information. And because of that, the information is densely cramped in there. And the feelings that that chakra may elicit can be quite intense. Another type of information that the red chakra contains is almost like a memory, if you will, um, of all of your traumatic deaths or death experiences from past life. Whether you were decapitated, whether you drowned, whether you burned at the stake, whether you got, um, I don't know, um, you, whether you were murdered um, during a Second World War, the airplane that you were on blew up, like whatever is that flavor. And usually there is many ways, you know, there are many ways that um, one died, uh, given how many lives most, most people have lived already, uh, right? This is not your first merry-go-round by any stretch of imagination. Your root center is going to contain all of that. And so very often, I think biology describes this as a natural instinct of survival and like the collective memory of humanity. But I will tell you, you can put five different people 
or five is just a random number. You can put a number of different people in the same high stakes situation, like life and death situation, and they're going to react differently. So if every human being on the face of the planet Earth or every homo sapiens had the same exact program of survival inside of their root chakra, we would not be seeing that. But every human being has a unique program in their root chakra. And because of that, different people react differently in life and death situations. For example, let's say you drowned in a past life and that is what happened. You may not remember that this is what happened. Your body or specifically your root center always does. That is the wisdom of the root center. And um, imagine that you are in a situation of a flooding. I don't know, your house got flooded or, 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 or something along those lines. And you have a significant other. The signif your significant other, most likely, is not going to have the same flavor of trauma around survival that you do. And, you know, you too may be going through the experience of your house being flooded, but you may be the one freaking out and your significant other may be completely cool and calm. And again, going back to my point that I made earlier, if everybody was just tapping into the same resource and the same, shall we say, flash drive that records human fears, then the couple in this particular example would be reacting the same exact way to the same exact threat. But that is just not the case. That is why some people have phobias that other people don't have. Some people are afraid of heights. Some people are afraid of, afraid of spiders. Some people are afraid of snakes, etc., etc. This does not come out of nowhere. This again, whatever phobia that you have, and that is like a very, very simple overgeneralization. I hate overgeneralizations, but in this particular case, it's true almost 100% of the time. All of your phobias that you do have come from a negative experience or a traumatic experience in uh, one of your past lives. It could also be exacerbated by the fact that somebody in your lineage also had that experience. But very often, souls get attracted to lineages based on commonalities, right? The clusterization principle. Meaning, if, uh, if a particular lineage tends to, I don't know, people in a particular lineage tend to die because of poisonous snakes, your soul would kind of be attracted to that lineage if you're also the kind um, of, of um, being that tends to die from poisonous snakes. Um, you know, um, diving deeper into your root center could actually help you not just face, but heal a lot of your, um, a lot of your phobias. It, it could be a very, very effective tool of moving beyond that. There's a lot of trapped energy in the red center in general, because fear traps a lot of our natural resource, a lot of our um, innate power. It just happens so. Fear is usually, it's, it's almost like fear is a guardian and uh, it, it, it guards the, the entrance or the doors to something and that something is a better life for you. Um, now, most people spend their life trapped by fear. They never graduate from particular fears. And so that, that's why that resource never gets tapped into. But once you start working with your root chakra, you're going to be able to start tapping into that resource and it's, it's like uncorking that bottle, you know, removing bottlenecks and getting access to this amazing, wonderful resource, um, your life force, which is part of your root center. And that brings me to the lighter side of the root chakra, because I feel like we kind of went into all the drama and trauma, but this center is so amazing. If we look at the flip side of the light side, this is your life force, right? This is your connection to the planet. This is your connection to the earth element. That means that this is your means of staying grounded. This is your means of staying nurtured as you're going through energetically and physically nurtured as you're going through your human experience. This is a chakra that gives you stamina. This is a chakra that gives you that, that adrenaline rush. Um, and we're not talking again, we're not talking about the physical, we're talking about the energy, right? So we don't need to get into the physicality of how adrenaline is produced in the adrenal glands, etc. cetera. Um, that is beside the point. What um, is pertinent to the conversation is that that will to keep going or the immediate hit, like the adrenaline rush that you get energetically is the red energy and that red energy dwells in the root center. This is also the best, like the best parts about the root chakra is it gives your body the ability to gather its resources very quickly and incredibly effectively. 
So when you're under pressure and when you're under stress, as far as your energy body is concerned, your higher centers, and we're talking about the physical experience here, not, I'm not talking seventh, seventh dimension here or like 11 D or whatever. We're talking about third dimensional worlds here. When you're under stress, when you're under pressure, especially if it's life and death situation, but even if it's not life and death situation, when you're incredibly stressed, one thing that's going to happen is your higher centers are going to go a little bit lower in terms of priority. And a lot of your energy is going to be pumped into the root center. So when really under pressure, when I'm under stress and in life and death situations and fight and flight situations, what preserves your livelihood is the red. So this is your first defense system. This is your first line of defense. This is your, I don't know, your inner soldier, your inner general, your inner protector, protectress. This is the one center that, you know, will be there for you even when all else fails. How amazing is that? And that is the beauty of the root. Another thing, because this is where the potential of our lineage lives, the memories of our ancestors live. Um, this is also where we're going to get a jolt of potential, like uh, potential aid, uh, again, in, in life and death situations or things that, again, in very, very stressful situations. Um, you know, sometimes when, um, I don't know, let's say it's an accident on the road and, 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 you know, you know, you're kind of, sometimes it feels like a lucky escape. It doesn't even have to be an accident on the road, but when you feel like you got off easy, like whatever that was. And then you're like, I don't know who or what it was that got me out of that situation unscathed. Sometimes it's a guardian angel. Other times it's your root center. I kid you not. And the root center specifically through the wisdom of your ancestors, or shall I say the instincts, maybe it's both, right? The wisdom and the instincts, because that memory, those memories are uh, imprinted upon your red center which in life and death situations, when you need to make like a very quick decision that is going to define the rest of your life, that is the center that runs supreme, right? Um, this is also where we can very quickly and very powerfully tap into the resourceful side of our lineages, right? We don't just inherit the karma and the drama, we inherit the good stuff. And a lot of that good stuff is going to come to you through your root center through your roots, right? Or your ancestors makes a lot of sense, including certain abilities, like an ability to learn a particular skill set faster than the rest. And, and again, that would be based on the lineage. For instance, let's say that your lineage has a special skill of singing very well or playing a musical instrument. Uh, and whether you know this or not, it doesn't really matter. I, I guess you know this, it's just easier to double check that what I said is true. But once you actually start learning to sing or start learning to play the instrument, your progress is going to be two to three times faster than an average human to get to the same level of proficiency. And you wouldn't even know it. And, um, you know, very often uh, people say, oh, they're just naturally talented. It could be that the soul is naturally talented, or it could be that they're tapping into the resources of their lineage that just happens to be proficient in a particular thing. And that is why very often occupations run in families, right? You have the family of Smiths, you have the fam family of potters, um, you have a family of doctors, you have a family of engineers, because again, certain skill sets are just easier to learn for a particular lineage because there is already a, te a template, right? And because of that, because it's easy to learn, there is an affinity. That's why a lot of people even choose the same career over and over and over again even in today's world, like let alone way back when, when you didn't really have much of a choice. Your red, uh, like I said, is your life force. Um, your red center gets depleted very quickly. So it, it is the one that needs to be replenished um, the most. So if you look at the, uh, like at the chakras top to bottom, the ones that um, preserve energy the best are the ones at the top. And then the ones at the bottom need a lot um, more of an upkeep, if that makes sense. So your crown at the very top maybe really only needs a top up every, I don't know, seven to 10 days. And then once you start going down, like your solar plexus needs a top up every two to three days. And then your root needs a top up every day, right? So your root needs to be nurtured every day for you to feel like you're uh, performing optimally. Because of that, it could be challenging to maintain high levels 
of energy because your energy and again energy is there are so many facets and flavors but very often when people say they're low energy it's actually two centers that are the problem energy centers it's the root and it's the solar plexus these two centers when they're out of alignment they're going to give you chronic fatigue fatigue like nobody's business so if you are somebody who experiences chronic fatigue start working with your root center then move up to your solar plexus once the two are in 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 sync with the rest of the world or the universe i should be saying you're going to be good to go let me maybe expand that thought because i'm getting the whiff from the collective that this is like an important topic and enough of you are low energy and especially now in, in you know in feb uh in the winter it makes so much sense so there are two types outside of the physicality of eating food and, and, and drinking liquids right um of the of, of life you need two types of nurturing energetic nurturing to maintain the basic basic functions of yourself as a human at an optimal level. Uh the first one is the root center is supported by your connection to planet earth, planet Gaia. And uh um, that's the first chakra. Um and the second chakra the solar plexus is supported by your connection to the sun. If your connection to the sun and your connection to planet Gaia are both solid, you are going to have so much energy, you're not going to know what to do with it. In fact, by the end of the day, you're not going to be able to get rid of all of the energy that you have already accumulated enough so that you would even want to go to bed, if that makes sense. If you're feeling fatigue very often, if you're tired, that means that there is a disbalance in one of those centers, either the yellow or the red. And since we're talking about the red, so there are two problems that I'm seeing currently with humanity, if 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 I may. The first one is not enough of humanity is even taking the energy from planet earth. It's almost like you have arrived here but nobody's shown you the ropes. And so you're kind of like moving through life and and you know you're somewhat taking energy from from guy through her like the foods that you eat and things like that, right? But not the way, not all the way and not intentional. And then the second issue around the root root center is even if you are taking the energy, some of you are bleeding it. It's it's almost like um um like a leaky bucket. Um and you're not able to maintain everything that um you have gathered. And the reason that you're leaking energy like nobody's business out of the red center is trauma. If you fi- find your own level, not even level, if you find your own flavor of trauma that dwells in your red center that is causing it to be a leaky energy center you would solve your uh, chronic fatigue like nobody's business the question is how do we find that trauma <laughs> easier said than done right in in some ways right there are dead giveaways what are the things that you struggle with the most around survival what are your hidden fears what are you most afraid of very often you can get to the main traumas that dwell in your red center by um taking a piece of paper and writing down the question what is it that i'm most afraid of in life like so scared what are those things and then being honest allowing the paper to take and absorb everything that your hand wants to write no judgment because enough of you're going to judge yourself for the answers that are going to come through like ooh this is not very masculine to be afraid of this like how dare you or like i can't believe this is not even the real fear yada yada those are the things that would only prevent you from getting to know yourself better so by understanding your fears you're going to understand what's draining your energy what's draining your red what's draining your root and what is preventing you from feeling optimal day in and day out for those it, and, and of course right but when we're starting to talk about practical matters i want to give you practical exercises this is not just a theoretical thing um you know that you know I, i'm not here to deliver a lecture i'm here to deliver a healing if that makes sense so um about 93% of you listening to this episode right now which is a vast majority are not taking the full amount of the energy that gaia wants to give you through the root center into your body to for very you, you, uh, you know th- th- this is not um to the same degree for different people some people are not you know are leaving 1% of the energy on the table other people are leaving 90 something percent of energy on the table collectively though it there is work to do here so 
First things first, your body, your body is naturally built to be connected to planet Earth. I don't know if you know that. Meaning, you are born of chemical elements produced by the Earth, right? You are very much a child of the Earth. At least your human vessel is, right? Your soul is not, but your human vessel is 1 billion percent. Because of that, your body naturally knows how to um, already how to connect to planet Earth. Question, if your body knows... How come 93% of you are not getting 100% of your energy that is allotted to you? What is wrong with this picture? And the answer is very simple. The answer is this. Resistance. You are resisting taking the energy on a simple premise that your body subconsciously does not perceive it as safe. Let me say that again. Subconsciously, 93% of you do not perceive planet Earth to be a safe place. As simple as that. And when your environment is not safe, when your environment is out to get you, that is why you have to build these houses. That's why you want to congregate in cities. That's why you're afraid in all the ways that nature can possibly kill you, consciously, subconsciously, on the ancestral level, all of these memories of how your ancestors died in nature. You know, all of these things are preventing you to take in all that Gaia has to offer. And then you complain that your energy is low. Your energy is going to continue to be low until you address the root cause. And the root cause is you have to find your way back to connection with the planet Earth, with your planetary mother. Understand that she's not here to kill you. Understand she's not here to hurt you. Understand that she is not vindictive. In fact, she is loving. And if you open your consciousness to it, it would open its consciousness to you. In fact, if anything, human being is the most dangerous predator alive on planet Earth right now. Whether you're looking at the animal kingdom, all these things going instinct thanks to the proliferation of humanity, or you're talking the plant kingdom, all of these planet, uh, plant ecosystems like the Amazon uh, basin going, you know, if not extinct, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of deforestation happening, right? If, if anything, the world needs to be afraid of humanity, not the other way around. But of course, what has been created is an antagonistic system of me versus them or us versus the planet right? That need to fight, be in a fighter stance, have to always be in, in control. And everything um, in, in nature is support, it has to be subordinate um, to a human, to cower at the human's feet, right? Of course, when you create that type of um, dichotomy, that type of relationship, the world is going to bite back. The earth is going to bite back. And then you're going to have a reason to be afraid. Where I'm going with this is Less about the status quo. Like we already know with all the chronic fatigue that is out out, out there in the world, that the problem, it's real. It exists. And it's not, it's not small. It's a significant issue for humanity. Chronic fatigue, not having enough enough energy for what you want to do, and therefore not having a life that you want, not feeling happy, not feeling fulfilled, just feeling like you're in the rat race, all the time or in a hamster wheel, all of those things. Talk about going through the motions, talk about the grind, all of those things that that are your reality. In this particular case, stem from being malnourished by the earth because you are resisting her call and you're resisting her call because you don't perceive her to be safe. You're like, okay, the world's out there to get me. I cannot trust anyone. I cannot trust anything, right? That absence of trust is root chakra deep meaning it's at the core of who you are. And so if you're looking to liberate yourself from this, I want you to get into, like close your eyes really quickly and imagine that you are seating, a seated in a vast meadow and 
You're being so afraid of that meadow. Everything that's crawling underneath you could be poisonous. There could be all kinds of things out there to get you like a tiger. There could be birds of prey up there in the sky. There could be the acid rain and whatnot. All of these things, right, are possible. And so you're sitting here and you're so afraid. And you're so afraid and you're so tense and you're looking around and you're like, I just don't trust this. Because this is your state currently, right? It feels like I'm exaggerating, but in fact, this is your state currently. This is the state of humanity versus nature. The state of constant mistrust and tension. And now what you don't know that you don't know is that if you are feeling this level of tension and fear towards nature, it feels the exact same fear towards you. I want you to become an observer for a quick second and realize when you look around that the pl every single plant around you, every single animal around you, insect, every single animal, even the tiger, even the eagle, and even the rain is afraid of you, human. Not because you in particular did something wrong. Not because you in particular are not a good person, but because this is a defense mechanism that nature has towards humanity and it is well-deserved, unfortunately. Through the generations, this type of treatment is well-deserved. And so what we have is an intense amount of fear from both sides. And do you feel that right now in your bellies, even as I'm talking through this, there's all this tension in your belly, lower belly specifically, but you know, your upper belly as well. It's like your upper belly is squished and you're trying to survive over here because everything is so goddamn scary. And it is not a pleasant way to live. And right now, from this standpoint, I want you to just let go. I want you to take very deep breaths into the very bottom of your belly and release. I want you to let go of the fear because if you are afraid of the world and the world is afraid of you and yet you know yourself, right? It's not like you are a threat to every plant, insect, animal, to rain, to the mountains. You're not a threat. You know your heart, right? In fact, you're a loving being. So the fear is an illusion. It is not the truth of the universe. It is a guardian that guards a better life. And it is up to you for you to release your fear. Just keep breathing into your lower belly until you start feeling like some of the tension is starting to leave your body. Unless your uh, lower belly feels a little bit more expansive and really focus on releasing the muscles like every single muscle in the lower belly because there's muscle memory and those muscles of survival have been contracted in humanity for over 10,000 years you guys i'm just saying you have a lot of release and releasing to work through and so use your breath breathe into the lower belly deep breaths you can even keep your breath in your lower belly. Like keep, um, hold your breath for three seconds over there and release. And the moment, the moment that the tension, and most of the tension leaves this part of your body, you're going to notice that there is a red thread, like a red cord that stretches from your root chakra into the very center of the earth towards the very middle of the earth. And there is a ruby crystal in there. Imagine it like a ruby crystal. And that ruby crystal is the center of life force for our planet, not the heart. But our planet has all of the chakras that we do have as well. And so connect to the ruby because this is the version, the Ga Gaia's version of the red center. Imagine that cord wrapping around the red ruby chakra of Gaia. And then 
finally starting to get the nurturing. So through the cord, like the umbilical cord, you're getting the nurturing, the ruby red energies from the center of planet earth into your lower abdomen. Yes, beautiful. And now I want you to imagine that that is turning, like your red center, your root chakra is turning ruby red. It's starting to glimmer. It's starting to glitter. It's starting to glow. It's like it got, it lit up, you guys, like a star. Isn't that beautiful? This, what you're feeling right now, the ones that are doing this exercise with me and the ones that are not, you guys are missing out. Maybe you should. I will listen to this part and do it because this is the upgraded version, what you just did, of the root center. You have a choice in life. You can have your root center to be plain red or being plain red, or you can have your red, red, red center, root center, sorry, being ruby red, which is a whole new different way to live. Do you know why? The ruby red instead of the plain red is an incredible upgrade because the ruby red center has very little place for shadow. Whereas the core red chakra in majority of humanity is so rooted in shadow, I couldn't begin to tell you. It's ridiculous. Like a good 70%, if not 80, of most people's energy that can, is contained within the red center is trauma, drama, and shadow. I'm just saying. But if you convert your chakra to the ruby red, we're getting into a whole other bowl game here. That is how you can transcend some of the deep set karmic knots and patterns of your ancestors. I don't care how many generations back through one simple meditation, through one simple exercise, just to reiterate what the exercise is, breathing into your belly, right? It's what we did. Releasing the tension, imagining the cord going down from your belly into the ruby red center of planet Earth and absorbing that energy back into your body, into your root center, so that once that energy reaches your red center, it becomes ruby red and starts glowing like the most beautiful ruby, like crown jewel you can imagine. And then once that energy is there in your body, I want you to grow it. Like allow it to unfold like a flower. Keep breathing into it. Extend it. Expand it. Create more room. Create more space in your physical and etheric body to house this beautiful ruby red light. Because I could teach you 60 ways of how to not feel threatened by life, or how to get rid, by, uh, get rid of fear, of how to work through your trapped mentality, your victim mentality, and all of the other shadows that we spoke about and give you very specific step-by-step -step guides on how to tackle each and every individual problem. Or I could give you one practice, and that is bringing the ruby red light into your red chakra, and that would over time heal like 90% of the issues of your red center. What do I mean by overtime? Do you remember how I told you that the red center really needs constant nurturing? It is not like the crown center that you can water like once every seven to 10 days. Um, unfortunately, your red center needs constant TLC, tender loving care, because it is, um, it always needs to be primed for action, right? So that center cannot be depleted. Because of that, if you just do this practice once, absorbing the, you know, inviting the energy of ruby red light into your body, then it's not good enough. If you're really looking to heal your trauma, the trauma of the red, you need to do this seven times, at least once a day for seven days, at least. And then if you end up doing other, um, meditations like chakra things or chakra alignment or any of the other things. Like for instance, I have a really, really good chakra alignment meditation on our sacred universe podcast, if you want to check it out. So if you continue working with the chakras, do yourself a favor. And next time when somebody tells you to imagine your root center, instead of imagining in a plain red, imagine the ruby red, 
the glowing, the glimmering, the glittering one, the, you know, the, the more beautiful version of the chakra. You're going to thank me later because, you know, what you imagine, what you envision becomes your reality, right? And again, those energies are healing. The ruby energies are healing in and of themselves. Once they're in your body, they're going to get to work. They're going to remove the distortions. They're going to um, cleanse. They're going to heal. They're going to get to work. Okay. And you have to do nothing. Isn't that beautiful? You can just relax. <laughs> That's the first thing, right? The first thing is the connection to Gaia and the Ruby Rat Center and the Ruby Rat energies. Second is the leaky syndrome, right? Remember I told you that that is the second reason why um, enough of you are feeling a chronic fatigue. How do you prevent that? Um, you find your fears and then you would imagine those fears, like the fear, let's say like one of your fears is the fear of going broke or becoming homeless, what, what, what have you. You would imagine that your ruby red center has a hole smack in the middle of it and it is black because anytime you have a distortion like this, like a big fear, it's going to make like a literal hole that you can see through and it's dark in your energy center that's supposed to be ruby red. What you want to do in a meditative state is imagine that you're sealing that darkness with beautiful ruby red light. Like you patch, you're patch, you patching up that wound so that there is no more, like the darkness is no more, right? How do you seal it? You can just imagine, again, uh, not to be repetitive, you can imagine that this ruby red light is coming back into the void, so to say. And you can also imagine um, like a five pointed star, just like as a seal, just to solidify this energy so that it doesn't come back into the status quo after this. And you need to do that for every single fear that you have identified in a previous exercise. Remember we did the writing exercise where we're supposed to write down your fears. You have to do the sealing for every single thing, for every single fear that you do have. And last but not least, if I were you, I would create a protective shield around my root center. So you would imagine your root center, your root chakra as a sphere of red light. And then you would imagine that it has almost like a capsule around it that is also ruby red in color. And through this capsule, no energy can leak out. Energy can come in. The ruby red light can still come in, come through but you're not going to have this leaky syndrome. Uh, you're not going to have this leaky uh, sensation uh, where energy, energy is just able to escape your body. And because of that, right, because of that, you're going to thank me later. You're going to have a much better time, easier time replenishing your energy, and you're not going to feel drained all the time, right? That's the red. Um, I wanted to see if the collective has any questions for me as it relates to this topic um because don't want to go on attention here and i know there are some questions around the root center so i'm here to receive the question as long as long as it serves the collective um you mentioned uh, this this question is from the female you mentioned that um a lot of the victim mentality for women specifically lives in the center how can we transcend the victim mentality <sighs> at one point every victim needs to make a choice to liberate oneself. I will tell you that every victim always has a trade-off. Like there is a reason why you are in a victim state. Let's be honest. Journaling actually is a very good way of understanding what is your payoff, right? Like the fact that you're a victim, what does that enable in your life? Like what are the positives actually of being the victim? I know this is not how you like to think about it, but if you didn't find enough positives in the experience, you would already have snapped out of it. Not going to lie. So list all of the benefits. <laughs> the funny part is when some people list the benefits, they're like, oh my God, I'm getting so much payback. I'm totally cool. I'm going to keep my victim mentality. And you know what? I'll tell you, this is a planet of free will and go right ahead. However, for the ones that um, want to deal with the victim mentality, I have made a guided meditation on our sacred universe podcast. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're going to link this down below in the comments. Um, but it is um, something around how to heal. Um, I don't remember the exact naming, but it's around healing your victim um, and how to heal your victim, how to liberate yourself from victimhood. Try that meditation first and foremost. 
Um, secondarily, uh, when you are graduating from victimhood, you are, it's a choice and you can graduate every, like, you know, you can have that breakthrough. You can step out of an old pattern anytime you want. The victimhood is like an old skin. So shedding that as a pattern is possible and you can use energy exercises. Like imagine you are literally like, um, um, you know, almost like layers of your skin are coming off of your body. And with that, that victim mentality and, and you would know, actually, if, if you're ready to graduate from the victim mentality, very often there is an inner savior, like a part of you that's going to want to come and support you through this. In, in energy work, in spirituality, there is a way to create one's double. Like you can, you can create energy doubles, like you can create like carbon, not carbon, um, energy copies of yourself um, and infuse them with particular aspects that you don't yet have. And those things, they become real. They become your helpers. So um, if you have a victim mentality, what you need is a savior. But you're not, you know, um, looking for the savior outside of you is not a winning game. Uh, because that further gets you into the victim. What gets you into the winning mentality, actually, is... Uh, so imagine in a meditative state that you're just making a copy of your body. Like uh, you close your eyes and you just like copy paste in front of you. Right? So there were two of you. Take the second version of you, the, the copy, and imagine that you're infusing it with courage, with hero mentality, with the savior complex, you know? All of the things that you need, like all of the things that you feel like you lack as a victim, you know? Because you can probably answer the question like, if, you know, if I had these, that, and the other thing, I wouldn't be a victim. You probably have your wish list. So infuse that other being with those things, with those things, qualities, skills, it doesn't really matter. And then watch as that energy double of yours is stretching out a hand to you. And the victim part of you is starting to follow this hero and be the strength that you want to be like, allow that double to be the, the part of you that drives you forward. Allow the devil to be the part of you that says enough is enough. We're making a change today. We're no longer the victim. We don't believe in that anymore. That is an old program. Erase, delete, remove, cancel. And so imagine they're leading you by your hands into a better world and a better life. And then every day when you wake up in the morning, imagine that you are nurturing this part of you. And ima imagine that the sun is nurturing this part of you. And the earth is nurturing this part of you. And whatever other planet that you love is nurturing this part of you. And then this part of you as your savior, as your stronghold, can carry you out of fire and, you know, help you move through whatever issues you have. Right? It's almost like an invisible friend. And once you, by the way, there is like the beautiful part about this. You want to hear what's the beautiful part about this? Once you've had this part for like a significant amount of time, from a few months to a few years, you can integrate that part into the fullness of your body. You can merge your victim with your hero. And through the merging, the entire you becomes the hero. Like you can choose that hero part as your dominating part. And this victim that you are, this part, you can choose that as a subordinate part. The choice is yours. And you can do parts work. Right? I did parts work around how to find parts that are suboptimal. I did a podcast on parts work. I made a YouTube video on parts work. Very different pieces of content, both very helpful in this particular case. So very often when people talk about parts work, it's, it's about kind of like taking this unloved part of yourself and, and, and then somehow, um, well, I guess it's not all that different. It's just in this particular case, what's, what's interesting is that you're creating a part within you that's a savior that then can become the default program. And you can, you know, despite the fact that it's an imaginary friend, it can be real and that can become your reality. And you can integrate it like, a, you know, a very um, real part of you back into your wholeness. And it can cancel out your victim. Now you're going to have to integrate the victim also, but that's a whole other story, right? So um, that's what I would do for the victim, right? Just build up your own inner strength. Don't look for a savior elsewhere. Because you have always meant to be your own savior. You've always, you know, 
No victim exists out there in the universe that is not meant to be its own savior, his or her own savior. It just doesn't happen. That archetype is a dual archetype. The victim always comes with a savior down the road. And you can wait for 3,000 more years for that savior to come in, into your external world. And, and sometimes they do come. It's just it's a very fleeting feeling, right? And, then, and that's where you start developing a codependent relationship which is, you know, may not be the, you know, the healthy, a healthy thing. So really the most sustainable way to get out of the victim mentality is become your own savior. Um, there is another question in the collective around the root chakra. Anything you guys wanted to ask? I'm here to receive as long as it serves the collective. The question is, how can I keep my root chakra in an optimal state all the time? And how much time should I devote to this? Frankly, um, once you work through the issues with the red center, I wouldn't, unless you have specific trauma in there that somehow you're not able to release and let go of, I would not necessarily think in, I think about the root chakra in isolation. The root chakra is part of the ecosystem of, of chakras, right? Of your body, of your energy um, field. As such, it needs to be thought of as an element of the entirety of who you are and not like a standalone little like um, thing that somehow needs special attention. All of your chakras require attention. Despite the fact that I told you the crown needs nurturing way less frequently than the red. It doesn't mean that it couldn't use some TLC. That being said, for upkeep, I actually recommend a chakra alignment meditation, again, that I did on Sacred Universe podcast, not to mention it twice in, in the same episode. But that one is really good as a more of a daily practice um, to get into the flow. That would be what I would do for the daily upkeep. Um, but if you want something that's really simple and something that's going to get you into the zone really, really quickly and really, really short in the morning, what you would want to do is you want to first start at your root chakra and then move up chakra by chakra. And you want to do the rotation. You would want to imagine that your chakra is a sphere of light. In this particular case, ruby red uh, for the root. And you want to start rotating it. And you feel how it's like pulsating, like um, like a little star. It's pulsating, you know, becoming a little brighter, a little bit dimmer, uh, dimmer. And then you go up, and you do that for all the seven chakras. All of a sudden, all of your seven chakras are rotating, and that is the quickest chakra upkeep exercise that I know. Probably take it would probably take two to three minutes, and the before and after is pretty dramatic. So if you wanted something quick, so you know something quick, that would. That would do. Alrighty, I'll take one more questions, my uh, question, my loves, around the red. Anything you want to ask? The question is, oh wow, I didn't realize that you could infuse the chakra with a jewel tone color. Can you do that for other chakras? The answer is yes, absolutely. You absolutely can. You could upgrade every single chakra of your body to be more high frequency, high vibrational, and more optimized. Usually it is turning the base color, like a flat color into a jewel tone. So instead of your uh, green in the heart, it's gonna be an emerald. Instead of your yellow um, in, the, in the belly, it's gonna be a citrine, for instance. Instead of your violet in, in the third eye, it's gonna be an amethyst. So uh, you would almost want to infuse each of the chakras with this crystalline, crystalline energy that tend to be high frequency. Some people call this five di fifth dimensional chakras. I personally don't subscribe to the fact that it is fifth dimensional anything. It's just the more, um, the high vibrational, um, the more high vibration you become, things get, um, so things are, let me, uh, let me rewind. Things feel a lot flatter visually in low dimensional worlds and a lot more iridescent in high dimensional worlds. So what we're doing with the ruby, with the sapphire, with the emerald energies is just reflecting this simple fact. Right now, the chakras of humanity feel a little flat to me. So by infusing some jewel tone energies across the spectrum of your chakras, right? Like for instance, I, I keep saying, right, that crown is white, but really it's diamond-esque. Like if we're being honest, it like glows like a diamond. Like your meditations, and your chakra exercises are going to be like 10x more pleasant and 10x more effective if you start infusing some high vibrational um, 
vibes in there. Not, not to be repetitive. Yeah, it, it is, you know, it, it is certainly like a full upgrade of the body. By the way, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please let me know in the comments if you want me to make a whole guided meditation around how to upgrade your chakras on our sacred universe. I'm happy to do it. Honestly, if, if you guys want it, I'm happy to record one for you. Alrighty, my darlings. Well, this was like a quick overview of the blessings and the curses of the root. Yeah, if you have any questions again, uh, let me know um, uh, in the comment section on YouTube. Other, otherwise, I'm sending you a big virtual hug and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.